Hi everybody and welcome to Paper Wishes Vlog. I'm Lene Gehrig and today I'm excited to bring you from our friends at Lavinia Stamps, they just have the best stuff, two stencils. This one is called Foliage and this one's called Stone. Also we've got some stamps here. This is Fairy Web, Moon, and also this Owl Stamp. I'm going to show you how to utilize these new ones with other stamps that we have featured in the past. You might already own some of them and we're gonna utilize these and make some Halloween cards today. So I'm gonna get right to it and show you, here's this first card. I also um, used a paper pack that we're gonna feature on tomorrow's webisode. So you might wanna check it out. And it is from Authentique. It's called Masquerade and has all these really vintagey looking Halloween papers in it, as well as these great die cuts that match um, also masquerade from an authentique. So that was what I started here. I used um, square blank card right here. It's already got the matching envelope to go with it and everything, it's white. And then for my actual stamping and coloring, I used lightweight essential card block from Hunky Dory. And this is great, it's a great weight, it takes ink really well. Um, and that's what I used for the actual process of my stamping and my coloring. So we've got the background taken care of here. I'm gonna start off by showing you how I did my background here. First of all, I just tore a piece of paper, just a scrap piece of paper. And I wanted to use that, utilize that torn edge. So I'm gonna put that right here. First, I should definitely get my craft mat. We're gonna get messy. All right, and then I like to just use low tack tape. Like we have this one from Hunky Dory. You could also use washi tape or stencil tape. So you just want something that's gonna peel up really easily. All right, so I've already, as you can see, had um, used my blender brushes here. I just used the largest blender brush. They come in a set of three. If you don't have these, I would encourage you to grab them, especially if you love working with Lavinia products. These are wonderful to have. I use these multiple times a day. Um, so let me start off here with Grasshopper. Um, I, pretty much all of the inks I'm using today, with the exception of two, are the Harmony. Um, ink pads. They are water reactive and this card I did a little bit of spattering with some water on there but for the most part I just use them for their colors. So I used this first and then just applied some of this ink. Now I usually blot my ink but for this particular thing I don't care if it's blotchy. Blotchier the better actually because I'm going to be doing this sort of stone wall for my little kitty cat to sit on and I wanted to create sort of a mossy background. All right, so once I've got that there, I'm using that top edge, as you can see, as a sort of a stencil. So then I'm gonna take my stone stencil, I'm gonna put that on right there over the top of that, and I'm gonna tape this down as well, okay? And then I'm going to use also Harmony. This one is the Seal Brown ink pad. And I'm going to use some of this and just go right over the stencil. And it's gonna create this really fun little pebbly look. For, and it's gonna be a perfect place for, for my little cat. The cat is called Mooch Cat. We featured it before. You might already have Mooch Cat if you're a big fan of Lavinia stamps. I thought he would be perfect to feature for Halloween. All right, so the thing about um, the Lavinia stamps really is just the layering process, which I so enjoy. There we go. As you can see, I've got my background here. So now we're gonna start with put placing a piece of acetate for a moon. Okay, so I have my circles, my 12 circles and scallop cutting dies from Hot Off The Press. I'm using the third from the smallest one out of acetate. If you've ever die cut acetate before, you might notice it's a little tricky to die cut. So what I found is I just sandwich it um, with cardstock and then go ahead and run it through my machine with the circle and then it cuts out beautifully. So a little tip for you there. 
And I'm just gonna place my moon up here in the left-hand corner, and that's just gonna act as a mask. I like using acetate because then it allows me to see behind it, and um, you could just use white cardstock, I suppose. So now we're gonna use a couple of different inks. So we've got um, the Midnight, Harmony Midnight, and we've also got the Periwinkle from Prism. And I'm gonna start off with this Periwinkle color. Oops, first I have to remember. I'm always needing to clean my brush right after I use it because then I'll forget. And I'm just using um, alcohol-free baby wipe for that. Soap and water works great too. If I forget, then um, I end up mixing my colors a little weird. All right, so this one is the periwinkle color. We're gonna be doing our sky. I'm not gonna worry about masking off the bottom here. And I'm not gonna worry about blotchiness because I'm going to be um, utilizing a lot of different colors. So I actually want a little bit of blotchiness to look at, make it look a little bit more like a night sky. I'm even going down a little bit into my little green and pebble wall here. Going around, um, I use a little piece of low tack tape behind my acetate moon just to keep it in place. But when I'm going around it, um, Gotta really ink this up better. When I'm going around it, um, I just hold it in place. And that way there's no slipping. Because that would be a disaster if you slipped right when you were getting it. Because I'm really using it for that nice edge. All right, so one more little dab of periwinkle here. And then we're going for the midnight. I'm gonna keep this brush, because I'm gonna use it with a little bit of Midnight. And, go. Right, so now I'm gonna take, oh, gotta clean my brush again. See, we get a lot of that Midnight off there. Because I might pick this up and want to use it with a yellow, and if I already have Midnight on there, disaster. All right. So now I'm going to take my smallest brush. And I'm going to put a lot of Midnight on there, and then I'm going to go around just the edge of the moon. Because I really want to put a little halo around that. There we go. And then we're gonna do a little bit of yellow. This one is um, a honey pot. So I can go ahead and take my mask off right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of honey pot. And once I get this part done, then I'll be able to do my stamping. And the owl um, and little kitty, Mooch the cat. Um, I like to just go ahead and stamp that with a black ink. You want something that's really going to um, a deep black because it's essentially it's a silhouette that we're creating. Go a little bit more in the center. All right. So what I ended up doing for my cat and my owl is I used the Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I also used it with a few other things. Where are the rest of my stamps? Here they are. Okay, so I went ahead and I stamped my owl. Right there, okay? Now, you might like to stamp using an acrylic block. Um, I prefer to use a stamping platform like the Misty. Um, that way I can repeatedly stamp it again and again without moving the stamp, without worrying about that if I don't get a saturated color or a good image. So that's gonna go right there. And then I also have my Mooch the Cat. And he is going to go right on that wall right there. OK, 
Okay, and then I've also got, let's see, what's this one called? <laughs> this is spring trees. So we're gonna be using it for fall. For spring, it's got these little clusters of buds that you can add to the tree after you've stamped it, like in pink, and it gives you that pink foliage. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just use it, sort of a skeleton looking tree. So I stamped it in several different areas. There we go. I stamped it right here, and then here, and then up along the side of the cat there. All right, all using the same tuxedo black, and I just sort of stamped the owl, the cat, and then removed those, of course, and then I stamped um, the tree. So once we've got that taken care of, then I needed my little leaves, and this one is called um, vine, and it's not really a fall stamp, um, but I loved stamping it in a couple of different colors here. I used Chinese red, as well as Friar Brown, and sort of just mix that when I was stamping that. I would stamp, uh, put a little bit of the red and then a little bit of the Friar. So as you can see, some are more brown and some are more red. And I just went ahead and stamped those. In fact, here's the actual stamp I used. And I just went around and I stamped it here first, and then here, and then here, here, and then I went back and did it right here. Then I added just a little bit of gold glitter glue, and I added, of course, a couple little tiny specks to my owl eyes, and then the vine stamp has a little tiny berry there, and I went ahead and did a little bit of gold on the berry. Once that was all done, you guys, I just went ahead and I matted this paper on black cardstock, and then just glued it to the six by six, and then foam taped this little greeting from the die cut images here. And I thought the boil, boil, toil and trouble was cute because I just sort of assumed that little cat was up to no good with that owl. So that was really fun to put together. So let me show you this next card. All right, so for this one, I used the foliage and right here, the foliage stencil. I also used the spider web, or the fairy web, rather, here. And of course, the moon stamp. But then I added a couple other things to it. I wanted to use, this is the sacred tree. So I stamped that here and here. And then, this is the ooh, small pixie stamp. This one's very well loved. I dug that out of my desk today. And I stamped that right over the moon. So I wanted to show you how to stamp the moon today. It's a little different than the other one when you're dealing with that shape. So here I started once again with my hunky dory cardstock for stamping. And I used that same little torn piece for a stencil. I just went down here. And then when I was done with my ink, it's the same process that I used before. I went ahead and placed the foliage right over that so that you have that nice foliage piece. Um, then I went ahead and I took orange ink and I went, first of all, I placed my little moon and this moon, once again, used, here we go, I used the second from the smallest from the 12 circles and scallop cutting dies and cut that from acetate and I just put a little piece of um, tape there and stuck that in the center and then used the orange, okay, and just went around in the same method as I did for the sky. So this has got this great orange sky. Then I was able to remove, oops, the stamp, rather the mask. And then I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna use my honey pot again. I'm gonna use my small brush and really just focus on the center there. My brush was a little damp when I put that on, so I left a few little damp pieces. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a little bit of the memento black and a little bit of this metallic pigment, this Midas silver ink. This is great stuff. It's a really beautiful metallic silver. 
And, <clears throat> excuse me, when I used my moon, if I can find it here, go. Um, I went ahead and I put a little bit of each on there. So I just sort of, because the silver wasn't quite dark enough, so I started with a little bit of black um, ink and then a little bit of silver. And then you want to use your stamping platform or your acrylic block. Um, I did it like this and then just stamped right over the circle. And as you can see, when I stamped mine a little bit offset, it's fine as long as you're just getting it in there. Once you've done that, then I went ahead and I took some more of the orange. and put my mask back on after I stamped my moon. And then I went ahead and did a little bit of darker orange and some Chinese red right around that moon. Okay, just like that. And then I even grabbed some of that silver and just went right around that moon just to give it a little bit of sparkle. At this point, um, remove the mask, stamp your fairies, stamp your tree here and here, stamp your spider web here, and even some trees here. And then for my happy Halloween stickers, well, first of all, for my background, I use the wonderful boo paper pack from hot off the press let me see if I can see it's got this great on the back of this one it's got this great black and orange diamond and then um, this is also a sticker set for Halloween that'll be featured on our webisode uh, tomorrow um, this one is a great little happy Halloween set and I just borrowed the greetings off of that for my happy Halloween so Really fun to play with, you guys. Um, I would encourage you to check out these stamps, mix, match, layer them. Um, you can make all kinds of fun creations using um, the different, sort of some basic things, using the trees and things like that, using the moon out of the acetate, and then adding to your collection with the owl and the spider web and the moon and these great stencils. So we have a great money saver on these and I would encourage you to check that out. If you're watching us on our vlog page, you just look to the right hand side, see the, see the uh, photo there and click on that. If you want a complete supply list of all the colors and the inks and the stamps that I used, right below the video on our vlog page at paperwishes.com, you'll see photo gallery. If you click on that link, then you'll see full color photos of these. And if you click on the photos, you'll see the supply lists. If you're watching us on YouTube, just look in the description box below the video for links to the money saver and links to paperwishes.com, which would take you to the vlog page and for all kinds of other videos. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Happy Halloween.